Welcome to all of you on this Shabbat. It's really the last Shabbat, or you can look at it like that, of the month we've been in, or the first Shabbat for First Fruits is coming up. So, one of the things we do and we've done at uh, Gloria Zion is always encourage First Fruits. You can go to our website and you can watch a wonderful video about First Fruits. I believe that was God's way that He had for us, that you, you would come together, you would worship, you would understand uh, the power, bring your best. The Lord said it this way, seek ye first the kingdom. You would enter in, bring your best, the first portion of what you have, of your lump to the Lord. And then once you gave that, you He would then bless the lump. And so we have been in the month that's associated with uh, Ephraim. Uh, we always try to associate a tribe and a month uh, and uh, with the month that we're celebrating in First Fruits. And the month we've been in is Ephraim. Of course, Ephraim uh, was the one of the children of Joseph, along with Manasseh. The next month we're entering in is the month that we'll be discussing Manasseh to better understand it. What these tribes do for us is to show us a picture of the whole. Uh, see, God had a plan where he had tribes, and he brought them out by tribes and armies, but he also had them war as a whole. And in this month of Ephraim, uh, I was reading through the Word of God. I was praying for our nation, actually, of America. You might be listening to this, and I, I you know, I pray for our nation. You pray for your nation because there is an awakening that will come with the Gentiles when we're all becoming one, and I, I hope Robert will discuss some of that with us. And as I was praying about this, I was reading uh, in Isaiah uh, chapter 11, and it was about a righteous rain uh, and a branch. It was about a remnant returning. And all of a sudden, the Word of God leapt off the page to me, and I began to see one phrase how Ephraim in verse 14 and Judah will unite and swoop down on the slopes. And all of a sudden the Lord said, if ever in, I know our nation, that we needed to have uh, a reuniting, a coming together, uh, a tribes coming together, uh, it's now. Uh, we're in a very crucial place in America. And I saw the pattern here of how God operates through uh, Isaiah chapter 11, which was a prophetic dimension that the Lord just brings us into to cause us to see things. So, in the midst of that, let me give you four distinct uh, areas that you can look at to summarize this particular uh, passage in Isaiah from the prophet because what he's saying to us is this, and you'll see it there on the screen, the resurrection of a nation can occur. And he said, I love what he said, then it shall happen, verse 11, again uh, uh, by my hand a second time. In other words, and what that says is there can come a time again where the Lord can bring us back into the plan of fullness that he has for us. Now, I want to encourage all of you out there because there comes a time where the nations realign, the Jew and the Gentile come together, and God has made a way for every nation to come again into its destiny if it chooses. And that's what the prophet was saying here to Israel. For a second time you can come again. I pulled you out of Egypt, really is really what it's saying. I, I, a second time I will bring you back where you come into your fullness. He's probably talking about the time when he brought him back out of Babylon. And the point is, no matter where you're at personally 
or corporately or territorially or in your nation, there is a time, a second time again, that you can come together. And in this, the Lord talked about Ephraim and Judah coming together. And I, I don't want to take for granted that we understand the concept of the tribes. I want us to understand Ephraim. I want us to understand Judah. Then I want us to understand what it really means when we come together. Now, with that, there's a synergy God is calling for if a nation is going to come into its awakening. And I think you're going to see that pattern here with Ephraim and Judah. Now, what else was the Lord saying here? He was saying a broken stump can have renewed vitality. Now, look what that means. You can sprout again, and out of the sprout can come a branch again, and out of the branch can come fruit again. Now, I believe we are crying out for that, I know, in our nation, and I want you to cry out for that in your nation. Another thing that you find in uh, Isaiah chapter 11, it begins to talk about the Spirit of the Lord coming. And what it's really saying is, Jehovah must have a place where he comes and rests. And I'll discuss that more after, after Robert teaches us some about Ephraim and Judah. There, Jehovah has a place and a time where he says, I want to come rest with you. I want to come visit you. I want to come be a part of you. And then once we allow that, do you know what he says? The wicked one must be destroyed that's working the division amongst you. We decree right now that the wicked one will be destroyed. And then finally, once the wicked one is destroyed, we can go in and take his spoils. There shall be a recovery. I want you to shout that over your life right now. There shall be a recovery. See, right now, the Lord is saying to us, I have a plan. I have a plan. This has been the hardest year for most people. But he's saying, I have a plan. I have a resurrection plan that I want to bring into your life. You shall come into a full recovery. You shall sprout and branch over a wall. You shall produce fruit again. A nation can be resurrected. Revival can come to a nation when scattering breaks, when all of this that speaks. You see why the enemy's stirring up so many factions in nations. He does the same thing in your life. He will stir up every faction in your life to keep you separated and fractured. And that's what he loves to do because if Ephraim and Judah come back together, Judah means praise. Ephraim, of course, means uh, uh, provision and fruitfulness. Look what happens. P praise and fruitfulness begin to unite. Now, another thing, what, what we said earlier is Jehovah has to find a place of rest. And that's why he's looking at nations right now. He wants to come down. He wants to rest on a nation. He wants to visit a nation. And what does that mean? Well, you have three categories here. You have the spirit of wisdom and discernment coming down. That was prophesied in Isaiah 11. In this, as mm -hmm. this remnant starts coming together, it's, it's a new lampstand forming. The spirit of wisdom and discernment. And then the spirit of counsel and might comes down. The spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. Do you know what that really means? It means he reveals who he is to a nation.
Then he reveals his relation to us in a nation. And then he reveals all of a sudden with spirit of knowledge and fear of Jehovah, we're mm -hmm. responding with our relationship to him. I see nations realigning with the Lord. I see that's what God was saying. There's a call now to a nation to realign. 